How you doing? I'm good. I'm Amanda Kivett. I'm Peggy Allen. And you're, you're, you're watching the Millcast. You're watching the Junction Fiber Millcast. We're glad you're you're with us. Um, this is a little bit pre-recorded because yeah. as you, I'm I'm in England. You right are now. in England right now, <laughs> hiking. Hiking with my oh. family and having a wonderful time. It's not raining at all. It's Low humidity. Amazing. <laughs> Excellent. Wishful thinking, but I am in England uh, as you're watching this. Though right now, I'm still at the mill. And right. And we wanted to make sure to have the mill cast roll in for you right. all. Right, and, we, so. and we've, we agreed this was the time to break down and do that, which we have avoided. I don't know I why mean, we've <laughs> avoided it. It felt yeah, like a big know, thing. There's yeah. just a lot of information about right, it. So right, right, right. So, of course, what, what we're is. talking about is our spinner. We've been doing a tour of all the different pieces and how they work and like you know, what role. Ago. Yeah, months and months ago, always delaying the big one, which is the spinner. And part of it is because there's a lot of moving parts. Everything else has their sort of quirks and whatnot, but basically they all have on and off buttons. But when you come to the spinner, whole different ball of wax. And so, shall we? Yeah, so Peggy's going to lead us on a little tour. You'll hear me chiming in from yeah, the background. Yeah, a man is keeping me honest in the background. <laughs> uh, uh, and yeah, we'll introduce you to our definitely most complex piece of equipment. Enjoy. All right, we are breaking down. We are going to talk about the spinner. It's been months since we talked about equipment and the last piece that we really needed to go in depth on was the spinner and um, we've decided that it's, it's time. And so I'm standing in front of the spinner. Our spinner is, has eight spindles, not big, and it's about 25 years old and it's made by a guy named Marcel, Amanda? Oh, she's making a face. Marcel, we'll put it in the notes, his full name. He's from Carolina Specialties. Carolina Specialties was where he was working. He's no longer alive. He's made about 25 of them. Um, and they're mostly in the United States, although we do know of one that's in New Zealand. Uh, anyway, let me, we're going we're gonna to break it down and show you how we spin. So it's going to start by coming around the backside. This is some lovely fin. And what, uh, so it's, it's for a customer. It has already been scoured, picked, carded, and pin drafted twice, and now it is ready to be turned into yarn. The key is knowing the input. How much does this weigh? Because all the dials that we have to set for the spinner are going to be guided by how much the roving, the input, weighs. So keep that in mind as we come back around to the front. In this case, this customer wanted three-ply yarn, so as you'll see up at the top, I've already done two rounds of singles. So for three-ply, I've got to do one more round of singles, and then I'll be ready to ply. But let me talk about how I, uh, how I go about doing that um, single. You can't just right off the bat, you can see it's ready to go. I've got set up here that roving. You can't just say, all right, let's press on and go. You've got to do tests to really make certain that it's going to be the kind of yarn that the customer wants. And so we're going to take, we're going to take the input, that information of how much the roving weighs, and then we're going to say, okay, here are our variables as we try to set things up. If that's the case of how much the roving weighs, and in this case, this weighs 3.34 grams, how fast should the back roller spin? Grams per yard. Grams per yard. What did I say? Just grams. Grams Grams per yard. Thanks. The question is, how fast should the back roller spin? How fast should the front roller spin? And how fast should the spindle be turning? Those are your variables in trying to determine what should be set up to make the yarn that you want. And what I've said to a lot of people, they'll say, well, I want DK or I want Aaron. You're not going to see any DK buttons or Aaron buttons on here. What we have to go by, and you can't do wraps per inch because I got nothing to wrap. So what we're using as our guide is what's called grist, which is how many yards per pound. So in this case, we are going to be making um, 700 is the number, 700 grist, 700 yards per pound. And that should come out to being a little heavier than Worcester weight. Um, and again, it's, it's a, so it's a three ply, should be about Worcester, but the key for us is 700 yards per pound. And so I'm not going to go into it at great length, but this is the document that we're working from. We have an Excel program where we put in the input of how much did the roving weigh, how much 
um, that we, we've got the 700 of the grist. We have that it's three ply. We're going to start out saying let's do the twist, the twist per inch at 4.3, and we're going to set the spindle speed. This is our spindle speed, and uh, um, there's our roving measure, and then here's the key. We're going to start doing tests, but we want our sample test to come at at 1.29. So what we do then to, to do the test is we just use one strand and we set the dials. Here's our master control here. So based on this sheet that we've created, we'll set the back roller at the recommended. We don't, we disregard the middle roller. Then we set the front roller where we think it should be, the spindle speed where it should be. The builder is just about how fast this bar goes up and down to fill the bobbin with um, the yarn. So that's, that does not impact the, the yarn that's being made. It just makes it uh, smooth in terms of how it builds up on, on the uh, uh, bobbin. The one other piece that's really critical is this. When we're doing singles, we're on the Z-spin. That's the direction that the bobbin is turning. When we're ready to ply, the critical thing, turn this to the S-twist because as you guys who knit know, the singles are going one way and when we ply it, it's going the other way. All right, you ready for the test? No. Okay, so we do our test to make certain that it's weighing the proper amount. Um, well, two yards test. A two yard test, sorry. We're gonna do the sample, weigh it out with our, we do our sample. Spin it off so that we're testing for the three ply. We put it on here, trim it, and then we take our sample and we have a very, very sensitive scale right here. And this is our scale that um, we'll, we'll measure in very, very sensitive um, calibration. Yeah, sure. Three, two, one, boom. I'll put, I'll do an example. I have a little piece. This is not two yards. This is for me to figure out the, see how you can see it's very sensitive to how it's weighing that little piece of yarn. So you do the test, you weigh it, you adjust your back roller. Sometimes you're having to adjust. It's mostly about adjusting the back roller and the back roller is what's determining how fast is that roving in the back coming in. It's usually the thing you're futzing with the most to get your um, uh, sample to weigh the right, the right amount. One other variable that is not about the creation of the yarn, but the success in getting it to load onto the bobbin is the traveler. And in a few minutes, you're, in a moment or two, you, I'm gonna show you how that works. But this traveler is, can, comes in different weights. It can be a lot heavier. It can be, uh, if you see in here, show you a really, here's a really heavy traveler. We use these when we're plying. I'll show you an uber light traveler. I mean, look at this. He's just as light as feathers. And the idea is you want the traveler to be strong enough to keep the yarn and the single ply putting on a nice V like this so that when it's going down and up, it doesn't wonk out. If you have too heavy a traveler, it will snap. So you want to find that traveler that's holding it in place, and when it gets to the bottom, it doesn't break. So right now, I'm using a 73. I've already done two rounds, and it's working just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how the singles get spun. Sound good, Amanda? Shall we go Sounds ahead and do good. it? Sounds good. All right, so the first thing I do, Osher ready. Turning it out. I have these compressors. You're going to see how I'm going to use them in just a moment. I hold them in my teeth. I know, deplorable, but that's what I do. All right. I'm about to turn the vacuum on. Here's where the beginning of the noise is. Oh! Ah! The pressure of television. <laughs>
up on. Very critical. So we are now ready to ply because we've finished up our, our third, this is a three ply, we've done our third single, and now we're ready to ply. It's all even more humid, yay, <laughs> woo! Um, already have brought down the three singles and set them up. I've saved the last two to show you how it's done. It starts with this tree that I'm gonna pop in, it attaches to a section of the front roller. And then I'm going to give this a fresh cut. And it's going to go into the tree behind the front roller and drop down. I let the twist sort of load into there. And then just to make sure it has enough twist, give it a little extra. And then wind it around. And you'll notice, I'll show you, we had that light bobbin for the single, or rather the light uh, traveler for the single. Well now, look, I have two much heavier because there's three different strands. The weight of the, the yarn is much more than the single. So this, these two guys are gonna help um, keep that yarn in the right position as it loads onto the bobbin. So I've got that one set, got one more. Go behind, behind. Blue. Drop it down and let it get twisty. And give this one a fresh cut. Yeah, it's nice and twisty. And then the key here is to figure out what kind of ply do we want to put in this. Now when you're doing the singles, you're taking a guess, you're taking a test, and then you figure it out. On the, when you're trying to determine the ply, which is setting up the twist in the reverse direction, we're going to let the yarn, the actual yarn, tell us how much twist should um, be put in for the ply. And I'll show you what that means. One sec. All right, I've got that going. I 
gone to my travelers. And the spinner is ready to ply. But what I did, as soon as the single, that, that third single was done, I took a strand from each of the singles, I took a strand and let it twist back on itself. Just hang there and twist back on itself. Because it has all the energy from the single, it's going to come back around to the plot. And so I'll give you an example. I did two, here's one. I took three and had it, you know, ran them together and let it twist back on itself. And this is what's gonna tell me how much twist I should put in the ply. And the way you do that is you take, I've taken four, I've measured out four inches, 10 to six, and the green dots are on top. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it free and we're gonna count. We're basically going to untwist it. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven and a half, eight, eight and a half. I'd say eight and a half. I'm gonna take it up and look at it against the wall to see if that's right. Eight and a half, okay. So I'm gonna take that eight and a half and divide it by four. 8.5 divided by 4 is 2.12. 2.12. I had done this before and gotten 2.25. I am going to... Well, Amanda, what would you do? I liked the 2.25, to be honest. You could do 2.2. All right, we'll do 2.2. Twist, the TPI is twist per inch, 2.2, kind of looking for the average. And the way we do that, so keep in mind, 2.2 and we have this marvelous cheat sheet. This is the spindle speed, and, I, and we said 2.2. There we go. I was thinking 2.5, but now we're at 2.2. So if I want 2.2, I need to set the front roller speed, 2.2, where'd you go, to 144 with a spindle speed of 2,000. 144. All right, so I come down here. I'm set at 2,000. And I'm going to 144. Here, let me wipe the dust off. 144 is my front roller. Those are the two um, variables, the two moving parts, not the back roller, just the spindle speed and the front roller. So let's take a look over here. I've got, oh, hold on, one more key. Come on down here. Do you remember we were talking about this? This is for singles, critical, that's for ply, which means these bobbins will spin in the opposite direction to put that ply in. And now I'm, I've got my dials all set. I don't need the vacuum on. I'm gonna clamp things down. And then when they clamp them down, I'm gonna double check to make certain that everything is threaded correctly. Yes, 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 yes. Behind the back, front roller behind. And loaded into here. So I am ready to ply. And the difference on the spinner versus the ply, if for some reason something goes wrong, it's okay to stop. You don't stop with the single, but you can stop with the ply. But I'm all set to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And here we go. about an hour and a half all together to just do the ply. It took about 50, 50 minutes to do the singles. So three sets of 50 plus the, um, the hour and a half to ply. And I didn't think I mentioned this before. This is 11 pounds, which is really the max that we can do on our eight spindles. So this is 11 pounds and that's what it takes. Now we don't want to waste any of it. And although we try very carefully to weigh things out, some of these bobbins are going to come get empty before the others, and all we'll do is we'll stop and we'll carefully splice it on. You won't even know it was there, and so we will try to be as efficient as possible to use up all the fiber that we can because it's our customer's wool, and we want to give her give her back all that we can.
We did it. We did it. I'm sure there's things we left out, but and and if it didn't, if there are things that didn't make sense, give us a comment. But yeah, in general, that's the spinner, and it should give you a sense of, um, you know, with only eight spindles, um, we we can do well, but it's it's labor intensive, and um, you know, there's the slow food movement. Well, there's the slow wool movement. Yeah, and uh, that that's what we've got. Uh, nailed. Yeah, so. I think the spinner definitely gets the most attention of yeah. all of the equipment because yeah. honestly it deserves it. It's that magical moment where right. it goes from wool to right. like yarn or string or whatever. You want. Right. It's that it's a loose, it's organized at that point, but it's loose right. and then you put the twist on it and all of a sudden it is a thing. It's a strand. It can do things for you. It can become and, clothing. It's amazing. And you know, this, this is the only spinner we've ever worked on and we know it. There are other kinds of spinners out there, um, yeah. and I'm, I'm sure they're all good, but what we know about ours is it delivers a fabulous finished product. Mm -hmm. and, and it had a reputation for doing that, and ours has lived up to that reputation. Yeah. It's just so much fun to hold a, a skein that's, that's come off that spinner. And it's so versatile, too, and that's what yeah. really... It, it, I don't even know that we knew what we were looking for when we bought all this mill equipment, but right. I'm so glad we got the equipment that we did because it Absolutely. really fits in with our whole thing, which is basically to be able to process all these different types of fiber all the, yeah, different, and make different fabulous fleeces, yarns, different breeds. make a really, really, you know, a fine yarn and a, like a bit of a bulkier yarn yeah. and it can do all these things because... And do it well. Yeah, because of the way that the draft works, you know, we're not kind of stuck with what goes in, what comes out. We can right. do a lot on that machine based on you know twiddling with the dials to make yeah. a, a different end product and it's it's really exciting yeah and so now that you've seen it if you say oh i gotta run the spinner you know just just you know, let us know <laughs> uh should we show what that spinner's done lately yeah yeah this is so cool we showed one of them i think at the, at the start yeah a few weeks ago look at this three colorway um this is all from the same farm it's all shetland it's yep. all shetland yeah, so this is a farm in Norwich called Bosca Verde Farm, and we um, we have half of their fiber, half of the right. yarn we made th that you're looking at is going to be available in our shop, right. and half of it goes back to the customer, kind of a new thing we're trying with yeah. them just to see how it works. They didn't need quite as much yarn, and we thought, you have lovely Shetland. Lovely We've, Shetland with, look at these great colors. Yeah. Um, we we occasionally do spin like a very small batch like right. this and we're kind of learning it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to manage the online inventory for right. this so if either of these uh, you know if you want a skein of this yarn send us an email we're happy to send out a custom invoice yeah, well, for it yeah. but we're not going to list it on our site we'll have it in person at open houses and maybe at right. festivals but... and, and it's a worsted weight it's three ply yep um, a, a little heavier than our making tracks yeah. Um, and it just, it, the three colors look so gorgeous together. Yeah, I'd say, I don't know, let's name them on the spot. This is kind of like a little blonde or like a... It, it's not really butterscotch, is it? It's, it's, it's like a it's like a very light caramel. It's, it's I'll go there. Light caramel? Light caramel. Okay, light caramel. Uh, then we got, what, like a granite? Gray. Granite is good. And what do you think for, like, a, this is like a super it's almost midnight black. dark chocolate. Yeah, yeah. shall we call it midnight chocolate? Yeah, okay. so there you All go. All right, go ahead, say that again. We got light caramel, uh, granite, and a midnight chocolate. Granite <laughs> and midnight chocolate. Peg's writing them down. This is uh, this okay. is how the magic happens. Yeah. People ask us all the time, how do you name things? It's just... And sometimes it's easy, and sometimes we just keep going back and yeah. forth, and then something sticks, especially with the making tracks, it gets a little tricky. Yeah, totally. So, uh, okay. yeah, we're really excited about these, and we yeah. love, again, we love to support local sheep farms. It's really, you know, what we're doing in here is cool, but we really need the sheep farmers Absolutely. in order to, to do what we're doing and we wouldn't do what we're doing without the we sheep wouldn't farmers. do it if we yeah exactly so it's a, it's awesome we love to be able to offer this yeah. uh local shetland yarn that is literally like 10 miles from where these right. sheep were born and raised so fabulous very cool okay what are you knitting no you got to go first because yours is way cooler nah yeah. it's just different all right I'm still oh she's making progress yes look at i've got almost a whole sleeve all right so it's uh i think i need about two more inches on the sleeve i put it on with the sleeve the drop shoulder yeah. does drop a bit more okay okay good pulled down good but i still like you know i can't wait to see what it's like blocked yeah and i, mean, I still haven't blocked mine so yeah we'll see you, you know what we should do is once who knows when once we we'll, we've fully blocked it even if it's like 85 with 85 percent humidity we got to both wear ours and and see 
Yeah, I mean, I, it's, I'm getting a little sick of the two by two rib. <laughs> you were sick of the two by two <laughs> six months ago. I know, I know. When I started, I literally started the sweater. I think Maeve was not born when the sweater oh my was gosh. started. Okay. So it's taken me a while. So we All might right. be talking next summer's 85 degree weather for that okay. reunion of the two by two rib, but it's chugging along. You're getting there. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, I knit it. Uh, I'm knitting it with. Some of my sheep's wool, again, talking about the local sheep. Yeah. Uh, this is from a sheep named Maisie, mixed with a little bit of Peg's um, Flox Corydale White to mm -hmm. give it that light heather gray. It's funny, sheep change every year, folks, and yeah. the fiber just, so like, I could bring a skein of this year's Maisie yarn that, oh. I, sp that I spun 100% Maisie, and it's the same color because she just grayed out so yeah. much over the year. Yeah. Um, and that's what happens. But anyways, all right, on to your very exciting knit. Okay. I had some time on the plane. So you brought your knitting with you. Yeah, yeah. I had some time on the plane too, but I had a toddler. <laughs> no, yeah, it's totally different. Okay. I, I mean, I, I haven't finished by any means, Ooh. but I've made progress. Sorry, it's a little, um, let's see if I can really show it. So this is the- That is so fun. Oh, it's hard Soldatna. to really- Yeah. Let me see. I may have to do a separate shot people, to show you this. People came back with a lot of comments about the neck and the pattern. How are you feeling about the fit of this one? I don't. I have no idea because okay. I haven't. I'll, I'll hold it up, but we'll maybe also take a shot. Yeah, roll that down. Now, right now it seems to be all orange, but that's the end of the orange. Uh huh. And so from here on in, it's going to be this. The body is going to be this gray. Uh huh. With little flecks of the purple of the aurora borealis. Lookout yeah. ledge. Yeah, lookout ledge and aurora borealis. I love the um, turquoise that you have here yeah, next to the Yeah, that's from the aurora borealis. Oranges. Yeah, I think that's so fun. Yeah, so I, I'm really, I'm kind of having fun with it. Yeah, this yeah. is way different than the yeah. stuff you typically knit. Absolutely, and you know what was fun is if you look at the collar, you'd think that the collar, the two, the, you know, the knit and pearl, the ribbing was a different skein, but it's just it happened that when I started with the lookout ledge. I was able to see what was how it began and yep. how it was ending. Yep. And I was, oh, it's really marled at this one end. I'm going to start with the marled end. Yeah. And it just finished being marled right as the ribbing was. I thought, ah, like I had planned it. <laughs> yeah, you got like a bonus extra color in there. I did. Yeah. That's so fun. I really had a lot of fun, and I'm um, I'm zipping along on it. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Nice. So that's what I'm knitting. I can't wait to see it. Um, yes. Yeah, folks. I'll be finished by the time you're back from England. Done. Yeah, totally done. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. Well, it's short sleeved, right? Yeah, that's true. So I have a shot. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> a little cap. Okay. Which I don't. I've no, never worn a wool sweater like that. I have yeah. already this think of. Well, what am I putting on my arms if it's cold? Your turtleneck. Yeah. Do you wear it with a turtleneck? I don't know. Would that you look weird? Could. Well, yeah, we'll this see. is. I guess this is why people knit a lot of those um, short sleeve patterns with like a fingering weight yarn because it's yeah. like lighter yep. for yep. summer. But yep. yeah, I don't know. What are you all knitting in the summertime? I, yeah, and is we, it lace? We're, we're kind of feel obligated to knit wool because we're a wool mill. I've never I actually brought. I was gonna change into this before the episode and I didn't. But oh. this is my one non wool thing I've ever knit. I'm oh, sure that's I've worn right. This before is that linen? This is linen. Yeah, it's linen yeah. that I dyed with some acorns, so that gives it that silver color. And it's it weighs nothing. It's super light. And what I really liked about so this is a, one of the petite knit. Um, I think it's the Anker sweater. I've made uh -huh. this a couple times. Um, but the neck, I put a little band right. of elastic thread That's in it right. that helps it just hold its shape because linen is so drapey, it yep, just wants yep, to yep. fall, yeah. um, which helps it maintain. I, I went a little overboard. It's a little too too snug when I'm wearing yeah. it, but. I've never knit with linen, and to be honest with you, I've tried it, I have. It's not as nice little, on the fingers. No, and I've done a little bit with cotton, but man, it's been a long time. Yeah, it's just not as nice on the fingers as wool, but it's yeah. uh, more practical in these very I, I, hot months I get of it. summer. Yeah. <laughs> so there you have it. Yeah. Um, I hope you enjoyed the spinner lesson, and um, we'll we'll see it. You're we'll see you on the other side. Also, yeah. mark your calendar. Uh, August fourth is our next open house from first three, Friday. Yeah, August. First Friday, uh, from three to five. And in the meantime, I hope you are having a great time in England. I know. And everything is going so smoothly in the mill. You yes. just wouldn't believe it. Yeah, Smooth. it's amazing. Yeah. I didn't hear a peep out of anyone from here the whole time. <laughs> All, right. All right, guys. We'll, we'll see you later. See ya. Bye.